With a yo-ho-ho, -ho, it's Taylor the Toaster. Welcome back to Let's Play Inazuma 11 2 Firestorm. In the last video, we had a little match with the Secret Service, and now we need to continue our investigation on finding clues regarding Alias Academy. That guy I just talked to was Mira from the Secret Service. You're not required to talk to him, but I just casually showed off what he had to say. My father is crazy about football. He goes all over the world to watch matches. Once I've rescued him, I'm going to go and watch loads of great games with him. Yeah, when I had a little explore of the area off screen, I thought, well, Tori's on the, men on the map. She must be the required person to talk to, but no, she's just there for optional dialogue. We actually need to talk to the men in black. Mr. Smith, Mr. Smith, here come the men in black. Galaxy Defender. Right, that's the closest you're going to get to singing in this episode. I wasn't even really singing, to be honest. It was just like smooth talking. I'm sorry, Mason Noise, I couldn't pull it off. Oh, Axel's looking down again. Will he ever cheer up? What is his problem? But now Tori comes over to talk about just not being able to find any clues. So there's a reason I'm skimming through this quite quickly. It's just a complicated way of saying we didn't find anything. You know, what you said about football, that it doesn't matter how old you are, or whether you're a boy or a girl. It really meant a lot to me. She's saying that not only because she's a girl, but also because, it's not immediately obvious, but Tori is a fair bit younger than Mark Evans and the crew. Mark is 14 years old, confirmed. Tori's also saying that she loves playing football with her dad and it's a method of bonding. But yeah, so Tori, I'm not sure of the exact age, but a fair bit younger. And meanwhile, Mark just said, it must be really hard being the Prime Minister's daughter. Yeah, with food prepared on the plate every single day, guaranteed source of huge income, fame across the country and respect most of the time. Yeah, it must be really hard, but Tori and Mark are friends and just when everything's being super friendly, Aliens. <laughs> Attention, Earthlings! We are Alias Academy! We hail from far beyond your puny galaxy. We have come to your pitiful excuse for a planet to show you our almighty power. We have chosen to use your beloved sport of football to prove that resistance is futile. That's an overcomplicated way of saying, basically, the reason the aliens chose football was because it's a method of human interaction to determine who is superior at something. So the space-bound aliens still wanted to use a normal human thing to prove that they're better than us. It's a poor excuse to have aliens in the game, but, you know, they had to at least have a reason. But she'll have no hope of beating Alias if she keeps getting worked up like that. No, it's not good. The last thing we need is to hand Alias any more advantages. Come on, you lot, we need to get to the Dear TV station. If I skipped over the dialogue too fast, yeah, we, the agent got a phone call to say that there's a lead to say that the aliens are at the Nara Dear TV station. I think that's what it's called anyway. Yeah, the Dear TV station. Which is very exciting, you know, as a former media student, the thought of going to a TV student station in a game Heck, when I was playing through this game for the first time, I was actually at college as a media student, so discovering that I was going to get to go to a TV station, it was very exciting. Quickly, 
For the first time I would like to make a video call on here just to show off how amazing the recruitment system in this game is. I'm just going to tell Hillman I would like a forward. That's it. And immediately Hillman is going to present me with four randomized options. Five even. So we've got Chicka Diddy, Bambis Shakin, Bear Turnbull, Derek Longhand, and Larry Helps. Let's have a look at the bios. We've got a calligraphy star. Oh, oh, well, we've got a stock it. Well, if there's one thing I know about characters in fiction, it's that people who chase the stock market always end up being rich. The fictional stock market is far more reliable than the actual real world stock market. So let's get him on our team. Also have a quick look at the extra competition route. The first match we've got unlocked is the Secret Service and there are a lot of matches here and I truly mean a lot. And I will do them all off screen. Secret Service in fact I'm going to do right now but not actually show it because there is no point. It is the exact same match that we just did. But I'll show the first few minutes or so just to get a feel for what an extra competition route match is and then we'll get back to the main story. So let's see if they're actually any higher leveled than before. To compare, Jude is level 11 and then the person in the same position on the Secret Service is level 7. Okay, so they haven't leveled up at all then, I don't think. We, we are considerably better than them. So generally I'm going to be doing... Sometimes I'll just do these when I'm not recording. If I am recording when I play these, then maybe you'll get the occasional highlights from these matches, but I don't think anything spectacular is likely to happen in any of them exactly. So I think we'll just call this off here because there's more important stuff to cover this episode. Well, okay, I can go for goal and then that will do. In a zoom a break and that will pretty much determine the outcome of the match right there because they are not getting a goal past Mark Evans. Let's be frank, we've even got a type advantage against this ground type goalkeeper. He doesn't know what's about to hit him. At least he's gonna try. Safety first! Screw safety! I'm gonna play with knives! Yes! That's it, oh, okay, we've got a highlight! They committed a foul on me in the penalty box. This is extremely rare. This almost never happens. As you can see, we've got five different spots of the net we can shoot into. I'm going to go bottom left. And... Oh, yes. Clear in the net. So I think there was like three different options, maybe four that we could have gone to to get a goal. Should be pretty easy to score with a penalty. But oh, I can't believe it! Penalties never happen in this game! Because unlike real football, people in Inazuma actually play with respect and don't try to foul you all the time or pretend to be in pain just to get a free penalty. Alright, in the closing moments of this match, I'll take a couple of seconds just to talk about one more thing related to extra competition routes, the ranking. It's the same as the ranking in the original Inazuma 11's competition route, but if you let your opponent score a goal on you, but you still win, or you score up to 2-0 in a match, you'll get a C rank. If you score... If you have a scoreline of 3-0 or 4-0 in your favour, then you'll get an A rank. Or if you score 5 plus goals in one match, you'll get an S rank, which gives you double the experience points. I got 7-0 in that, including the first ever goals from Cheney, and I'm pretty sure someone just learned a new move, but I accidentally skipped over it. But oh well. We... 
I've, yeah, what am I on about? Yeah, I got an S rank, so double experience, woohoo. Yes, indeed, Hillman said that he'd have a player waiting for us at the bottom of a staircase. Can I help you? You want me to first football you? Well, all right, take me first, and I'll do with you with. This is the first example of recruiting a new team member. Great, thanks for that. Whoever's got a car alarm going off in Middlesbrough, there is no way for me to edit that out because I record my game's audio using the same microphone I record my commentary with, so I would appreciate it if that stopped! But all we need to do in this particular case is gain possession of the ball, and once we do that, Dan Turnbull should be willing to join Ryman as our 12th player, which we did pretty easily because, you know, Jack's got the wall and there was no way they were getting past that. So we're going to have a stockbroker on our team now. Hope he becomes a millionaire and puts all the money into funding for our club. I promise me the promise, I'll join your club. And he's with us, just in time for another optional match. He's already, he's already got four shot moves! Good grief! But indeed, there is a second extra competition route we can do throughout this journey. Not only can you rematch all of the teams from throughout the story, again in Mr. Veteran's competition route, all of the teams that you fought in the football frontier in the last game, you can also play again in Inazuma 2. So that's part of the reason I think Inazuma 2 is better than the first. You get to do everything the first one lets you do. Just, it, where's Jude? Why are you up there? So we get to play Occult and everyone else throughout this main journey. What level are they? You may remember that Occult was extremely hard to beat in the original game, but they're not here. No ghost lock tricks or anything like that. Like the extra competition route on Mr. Vet on the Inazuma bus with Mr. Veteran, there's no real reason for me to show these in full. I'll keep going with this for a while because it brings back the memories of the most difficult first boss in a game ever, <laughs> kind of. I mean, it's no Dark Souls, but yeah, uh, you just kicked the ball out of the pitch, you failures! <laughs> nice throw in, Jack, that was very fast. That was offside, really. But yeah, so, unlike Mr. Veteran's competition route, where they're just all on a bus, the players from all the old games, you have to actually go out of your way to find them, so the very first match are called is waiting in at the bottom of the staircase here. I would love to S rank this, getting 5 nil in order to get double experience and also an extra reward for completing the extra competition route with an S rank on every match, but I don't know if I'm quite capable of that yet. But let's get a goal and then I'll leave the rest of this match to your imagination because like I said, there's more important story progression to do in this one. Inazuma Breaker! Nope, not gonna use a special move. Fair enough. In it goes. Oh! Oh, I forgot! Yeah! The, the Overworld ones against a cult, they only last for one half. So they're half the length of a normal match for some reason. And somewhat, somewhere in Deer Park we'll actually be able to find another team from the Football Frontier, this time saying Wild. Okay, so the S ranking thing doesn't actually matter here in the overworld. Instead, I'm going to have to play them again on Mr. Veteran's bus route. Playing them in the overworld for a little bit simply unlocks everybody. And here he is, represented by Chicken. What? Fancy a friendly against Wild Rabbit 11? Are you too, Chicken? 
No, we're gonna... I like how his question was, or are you two chicken? We say yes, and then we get on with it. I think I've had a change of plan. I probably made this clear with a caption on screen minutes ago, but I think instead I'm gonna save Dear TV for the next episode and instead focus on the extra features, such as the extra competition route in this episode. Because now that I know that we actually get to play against Wild within the grounds of Nara, <laughs> totally forget the name, still pull it back. All of these guys from Wild are back, still based on animals just as ever. And we're gonna play it against them. It only takes 30 in game minutes, because there's no second half for some reason, and then I have to do them in Mr. Veteran's competition route all over again, off screen. Beat out the killer slide, of course you can. But I want to draw particular attention to Wild because absolutely one of my favorite memories in Inazuma 11 2. I've made it clear, right, that the recruitment system in Inazuma 2 is the best in the series. You just walk up to the machine, pick anyone, and you get them. Well, of course you have to talk to them in the overworld and play a game of football against them, but it's the simplest it has ever been and will ever be. While I went to college every day on the bus... Oh! That red M level up sign! Yeah, you see it on Axel? Is it still going to be there when I resume? Yes, it's still there! That means I've used Fire Tornado so many times that it's actually gotten stronger. But I think I'll explain more after I'm done with my first point. Yeah, like, recruiting is so easy, it takes such a short amount of time that in Inazuma Firestorm, playing on the college bus, because it took me 45 minutes to get to college every day, I took the time to recruit every single member of WILD. Because they just say so many funny puns every time you walk up to them and try to recruit them. So once I've actually played against the team here, I'm going to demonstrate by picking whoever Coach Hillman wants me to take, and I'm just going to get one. Don't know how, if it will stay as a permanent member of the team, but I will definitely get a member of Wild Junior High in this episode, maybe get someone from a cult as well if I've got the time. And then off screen, I'll play against Wild and Occult all over again. I mean, maybe I should wait until I've leveled up a bit more so I can S rank them more easily. But I'll figure that out because it's not detriment, it's not imperative to the viewing experience. That's just stuff for my own fun to level up the players slightly and work towards a slight reward. You obviously get rewards for beating the extra composition route, but. They're nothing amazing, by any stretch of the word. Yeah, the the one sucky thing about these matches being half the length is that that means you're going to get even less time with the genuine match music, because if the match is only going to be 30 minutes, then you should just fire up right away and it'll last almost all of the match. Then your opponent will fire up and then you didn't get to hear the actual music. I wish there was just an option to turn off the fired up music. I'd never use it in the first Inazuma. Maybe I should play you the fired up music from the original Inazuma as a reminder of what we've lost. I just feel that track was the ultimate hype, and now we hear f we fire up even more in this game, and it has to be to this theme, but I'll try and make that the last I complain about it. I haven't got any TP for an actual shooting move with Jude. Oh, can I pass to Axel, actually? Yes, I... Damn, I don't have enough TP to actually use it, but can you see the plus one above Fire Tornado? 
Yeah, we've used the, so the move so much that it's leveled up. It's gained a plus one. Doesn't make much of a difference, but it makes the move slightly stronger. I just more prefer this feature from a collective sense. I'm not, I don't try to level up moves for the purpose of making them better. I simply want the feel good factor of making a move as leveled up as it can go. There's several different measurement schemes of leveling up. Fire Tornado is on the plus one and then plus two scheme, so that means it can only level up twice, sadly, but some moves can level up a bit more than that. But perhaps I'll expand on that a bit more when we've actually managed to level up one of those types of moves. champions! You know, I remember seeing a student from Brainwashing Junior High on the Northern Ridge in Hokkaido. Yeah, we can't go there yet. Are you trying to spoil where the next location will be? Good job it, the town names are in Japanese, otherwise you'd be able to figure out what it was like. But there we go, he just disappears now. So, I'm gonna go back on the bus and let's just see which players Mr. Hillman would like us to choose from. From farm, we have to go on recruit and then pick wild. I keep calling them farm, that's a different team. Focuses on defense. They're very similar names, farm and wild. The wild guys are the ones filled with animals, but the farm guys are not. You can surely understand why I'd get confused. Now we could have one of these guys, or we could simply go on search again, and same search, and then it just comes up with a different set. Isn't this just so brilliant? We could absolutely have anyone. The chameleon, I remember you being the only guy to not say something funny. Eagle, he makes puns about his sharp vision, but I've already used him on my team before. Um, I'll go on, he's got to make some funny fish puns. I've also used this guy on my team before, so I'm probably not going to use him, but I just want to see what he says. And here you are. Bloop! You want to open me a... <laughs> Such an obvious joke to make. You've got me hook, line and sinker. I'll give it my all. <sighs> and we've got Fish Man on the team. I'm going to cut back to the bus and get someone else from Wild. Yeah, this guy should do it. It'd be nice to have another forward just because... I, as I say, I like to level up moves as much as possible, and shooting moves are generally the moves you're going to be using the most, so this guy would probably get the most opportunities. He was hiding in the same place as Mouseman. What's this? You want me to slither onto your side? Yes. Superb! Let's see what you've got. Well, I failed. Let's try that again. At least we get exclusive battle loss dialogue. Yes! Witness the superior... Wow, that's a typo. Superiority and supreme skills of Harry Snake. I actually know quite a lot of snakes in gaming. Not only is there the one from Metal Gear Solid, naturally, there's also Snake from 9 Hours, 9 Person, 9 Doors, which is in my top 20 video games. The prequel to Virtue's Last Reward, a fantastic and highly recommendable game. Let's move Chasey, Chaney closer to Jack so he can kick straight to Kevin. No messing about, we're scoring a goal now. I don't think Wild, Wild Thing, Wild Claw would be able to stop this. We're going for Snake, but it seems like we should be going for Boar. Is he better than Mark Evans? Nah, he could not be. There we go, 1-0. And well, well, well! Dragon Crash has leveled up. I didn't think it would happen that quickly. Impressive! I'll slip into a Ryman shirt then, shall I? And there we go, Snake has joined us. 
going to a TV studio in the next episode is getting my media student senses tingling. So, a guy called Phil Noir would fit right at home on my team. Oh, Dragon Crash won! Yeah, that's the first example of seeing a level up move in context. But is it enough to beat Warp Space? Of course it is, cause it's leveled up. So there we go. I could see myself using Phil Noir actually. He's a forward, so he should hopefully get some good shooting moves. And I might as well say this that last time I played through Firestorm, an ignominious defeat for Phil Noir. I got a player from a cult called Ghost, who I'll recruit for the fun of it right now, actually, just to demonstrate my point. Well, never mind, I can't afford him. But yeah, Mick Astley. Rick Astley, maybe? I got him on my team last time I played Firestorm, and it was... He was my star defender. He was always the one protecting the goal. So using an occult player again could be quite fun. With, in the form of Phil Noir. Maybe we'll get a chance to give him a go. In front of the TV station. Goodbye for real.